All right, get ready for more trigger talk. Now, I know I've already gone over extensively uh, the functionality of triggers in uh, at least one of the other videos, but today I want to talk about the trigger types um, because I got something new, and we're gonna check it out together. I don't love you hoes. I don't love you niggas. All I'm giving a fuck is about my liquor and my trigger. So in the 90s, uh, I want to say mid-90s, probably maybe 93 and on, uh, these were uh, introduced by D-Drum. And I believe there was, uh, for a long time, this was the only one you could get. But if memory serves, there was also a competitor they had. I, I want to say they were yellow, but... It's been a very long time, and I was pretty young when I had first, like, become aware of this shit, so... I'm actually gonna look that up really quick. Yeah, these. Anyway, so D-Drum was the first company to produce this acoustic trigger, and the way it worked is it would uh, mount to the drum shell, and then this part would touch the drum head, and it worked on vibrations. So, using this pad as an example, you would mount it, like, say this was a bass drum, you know, you'd mount it like that, and then when the beater struck the head, the vibrations would travel through the drum head and then set off the trigger out through the uh, cable and then into those early drum modules. So in the 90s, the Alesis DM, or I'm sorry, the Alesis D4 was pretty much the standard that everybody used, and then a little bit later, the DM5 came out, which I used extensively. Now, there were problems with these. Uh, sometimes a lot of problems. So um, the biggest issue with these was because they worked on vibration, um, other vibrations from other sources would set them off and they would go off when you didn't want them to. You know, examples of that would be like your bass player's amp. Uh, if it was next to your kit, you know, the vibrations, those low frequencies would just go, you know, would travel right through your bass drum and then cause the head to vibrate and it would then set off the trigger. Also, like playing live, they were especially problematic because you've got all this stage volume and, um, you know, just everything playing at once through the PA and everything. That just uh, was a real, real difficult thing to overcome. And the way you would do that is you'd have to pack your bass drums full of pillows and uh, uh, tune the head up really tight. And it just, it made the bass drum really unpleasant to play on, you know, um, in order to control those um, excess vibrations and what you call a uh, double triggering, false triggering, um, crosstalk. Now, fortunately, I didn't have to use these for very long. Um, by the time I was ready for triggering, I'd already been playing drums for, I don't know, about a year and a half or so. And very shortly after I figured out how to trigger my drums, I then uh, switched to access pedals and then I could use the E-Kit. So, you know, that was that was cool because these were definitely a lot of trouble. You know, I actually remember one time uh, when I was uh, playing guitar in a band, and I had discovered that all those super clean and hella perfect sounding bass drums, you know, from all those death metal drummers were triggered. You know, I was probably I don't know sixteen or seventeen at the time. You know, and I just discovered that, and I went to my drummer and I was like, "Whoa, can you do that, dude?" And he's like, "No," <laughs> because um, you know, it's not just the trigger, you have to buy the trigger, the module, the sound system, all the cables and everything. It was just like out of the reach of most of us at that age, you know, when we were just like broke kids, you know. So by the time I was ready for triggers, I had, you know, a good job and I had the money to uh, put into uh, uh, the entire system, you know. So like I said, shortly after that, um, I got my E-kits on my Axis pedals. And that changed everything. So that brings me to the Axis E-Kit. Now this, like I said, it's an uh, Axis exclusive innovation. And, um, you know, their pedals are drilled here. All Axis pedals have these holes in them to accommodate this trigger. So um, what makes this super cool is it's um, mounted to the pedal itself, not the drum. So things like external vibrations, crosstalk, all that stuff doesn't apply to these. Like, they are they are completely unaffected by any other forms of um, interference. And what you play is what you hear. So when the beater strikes the head, this, what they call the detonator, 
which is mounted to the axle of the pedal itself, that strikes this trigger box, and that is what um, sends the signal to the module. So this is what it looks like off the pedal. Um, this somehow I have an extra one. Like I, I don't know. I don't remember how I got this, but you know, I, obviously I have one on this pedal and one on my other, and then this is an extra. But this is what you get in the box, you know. And at first it's kind of perplexing. You're kind of like. What the fuck is that? But this is the detonator here. So this is what actually mounts to the axle of the pedal. And it moves with it. So that moves with the beater like that. And then this is the trigger itself. So, you know, you've got your output cable here. And this is where uh, the detonator strikes it. And then obviously it mounts to the frame with these screws. Now, I'm not sure how long these have been around, but they must have been around for a really long time, or at least a concept that was around for a long time, because even the very oldest Axis pedals all have these holes. And this is the oldest Axis I've ever seen, and it still has the holes. So that's that has to be from the early 90s. So um, Daryl Johnston, you know, the guy, the inventor of these pedals and the one responsible for coming up with all these super cool innovations he must have at least had that in mind or was working on something um you know long before they actually were introduced because i want to say these have been a thing since the late 90s early 2000s i've been using my e-kit since 2005 and i love them and i've never seen any reason to change but here's the thing they're only available for axis pedals. So, um, what this new shit is, is an onboard trigger that is similar in a sense that um, it's operated by the pedal action itself mechanically as opposed to the drum head and the vibrations and all that stuff. Now, uh, just one more word about these. I, I want to say that, um, you know, over time these did get better. Uh, modules got better and they got more, you know, comprehensive settings and stuff to deal with a lot of those problems. And then, um, you know, Roland and other, uh, manufacturers who specialized in electronics, you know, would come up with better versions of this. Um, but nothing can compare to the accuracy and, um, the consistency and the reliability of the e-kits. So anyway, this new shit, um, it's similar, but it operates by being struck by the footboard. So there's four or five brands of these out now. Axis makes one, which is, I mean, I, I would love to have the Axis one, honestly, but they are out of production for now. Um, they're rumored to, you know, there's, they say they're going to be redesigned and re-released sometime this year. I don't know. It's been a while. There's, It's just unknown when those are going to come out. So of the remainders, um, you've got the On Trigger and the Foot Blaster, and the precision kicks, which is what I'm, which is what I've got, and I'm going to do extensive testing with after I explain this. So, I definitely don't like those other two designs at all. Um, I, I don't like how the um, output jack, you know, is on a, it's on its own proprietary cable like that. I don't like that at all. Like I want to be able to plug it right in to the trigger housing because that just seems like it's asking for problems. And if one of those shorts out, it seems like it would be a real pain in the ass to replace that, you know? So this is what the precision kicks looks like. It's um, made in Australia and it, uh, I, I like, I like this design better than those other ones. Like I said, it's got um, the output jack directly in the housing and uh instead of having to bend a piece of metal like those other two with this you make adjustments by loosening this little uh thumb screw here and then you can angle this this way and that or raise it up and down just a little bit so i really like that design it's also a lot smaller than those and um uh, i really like the way that it uses this um it's not Velcro, but it's similar to Velcro. It's it's like a rigid type of locking um, fabric, you know. And the other ones use double-sided tape, um, except the Axis one. That has the option to be actually bolted to the pedal because just, you know, everything Axis makes is just better. However, those are very expensive. In fact, one of those costs as much as two of these. And like I said, they're out of production for now, so. All right, so here's what it looks like mounted to the pedal. So as you can see, it attaches to the base plate. 
and then the um, footboard strikes it. When the beater strikes the head, the footboard strikes the trigger. Now, it's a pretty cool idea. I mean, I, I got to say, I'm going to compare them to my E-Kits, and I'm going to see if they're, uh, you know, a worthy competitor or whatever. But they are made for people who don't have Axis pedals, who either don't want to use Axis or, you know, for whatever reason, they don't, you know, they, they can't use the E-Kit. Um, you know, you got these as an alternative because they'll work on any pedal. Now, I got these specifically as a backup, all right? And that's the other thing I wanted to talk about here. Basically, okay, so look at this. So the weak point of the E-Kit, as you can see here, it's got this wire and there's a torsion spring in the middle and this, you know, uh, obviously it takes the impact of striking that trigger box. Now, I have never, ever had a problem with this in all the time I've been using these. Um, you know, I've, I've never had an issue, but some people say these things snap. Some people say that they, you know, that they're unreliable, but I have never had a single problem with these. And I would guess that the people that do have problems with them don't, you know, they're not using them correctly, or maybe, you know, they're not taking care of their pedals. Like if you don't have a case for your pedal, then I mean, what, like why, I don't know. I don't understand like why people wouldn't. I mean, these things are a thousand dollars just, you know, for the base model. Uh, mine are at least 1800 you know, probably more with all the upgrades and stuff I've done. So I, I don't know why somebody would just throw these in a bag and throw that in the back of a van or something. So I just really don't understand how somebody could fuck these up to the point of them failing. But it got me thinking, like, just what if, you know, what if my e-kit went down on me? What would I do? Because the thing about this, it would be very hard to replace this on the fly you know this is something that you couldn't just it wouldn't be an easy fix because at the very least what i could do is if this failed on me i could replace it with this one but that means pulling off the spring rocker and what that does is throw your beater into um a neutral state so you know you'd have to pull that off put this back on tighten it then recalibrate and realign your your beater it's just it you know that's not something you could do at a show or something you know because you're not set up um to, you know, for, to mic your bass drum or anything. So it's like, if your trigger goes down, you're going to be stuck with one bass drum for the rest of the show or the rest of the night or the rest of the song, whatever. So I figured I'd get these, I'd try them, and then I'd use them as a backup. So let's just say my E-Kit went down, and then I'd be like, oh, fuck, all I'd have to do is throw this on. You know, I would have it pre-aligned. You know, I'd have it set up in advance. Then I would just throw it on, you know, click it on like that, take the cable out of this, plug it into that, and we're back up. So we'll see. Okay, so after extensive testing and experimentation with these and then comparing them to my tried and true Axis E kits here. These are my thoughts on the Precision Kicks. Okay, so what I really liked about these was they were very, very accurate. I didn't notice any drop strokes, any missed hits, uh, any double triggering or anything like that. So uh, definitely um, work as advertised, you know, as far as accuracy. And I also like that I didn't have to change any settings on my module. So whatever settings I use on my on my uh, TM2 for the E-Kits, I can also use for this. So um, that's really cool because, like I said, I want to use these as a backup. So let's just say that, you know, my E-Kit went down. I would throw this on and it's good to go without any um, adjustment of the settings. You know, like sensitivity, velocity curve, retrigger cancel or anything like that. But what I don't like about these is the noise. First of all, so see when you hit your bass drum, there is a very noticeable audible click when the footboard makes contact with that trigger surface. Now, in a live situation, you know, um, you know, with all the other instruments and everything, you wouldn't hear that. But in a recording situation where you know, the, obviously the bass drums are triggered, so those wouldn't be mic'd, but you're going to have mics on everything else. You know, the 
um, all your drums plus the overhead mics, which are super hot, you know, to record your cymbals and stuff. This would, I feel like that would definitely be picked up by those condensers. And when all was said and done in the mix, you, you probably wouldn't hear that. But I just don't like it because, you know, when I'm just playing on my kit in my drum room, I can hear that even though I've got the triggered sounds coming through my headphones. Um, the other thing I don't like is the feel. So, um, like I said, when the when the beater strikes the bass drum head, you kind of bottom out the uh, the footboard bottoms out, and there is a little bit of give. Like it does have like this foam. Kind of hard to see, but it, it does have like a foam, um, you know, impact resistance of some kind. So it kind of, you know, it kind of squishes down a little bit. You know, when you when you really bury your beater into the into the head like that. And like for me, like I don't hit the same, you know, the same way all the time. Sometimes, um, you know, when you're playing really fast, you, you tend to kind of, you don't play as, as, as heavy footed, I guess you could say. But when you're really slamming out grooves or whatever, you know, you're kind of pounding your pedals a little bit more because you're just, you know, you're just feeling the music. I definitely felt like uh, I was, you know, the uh, natural action of the pedal and the beater um, being buried into the head a little bit you know i could definitely feel it underfoot let's just say yeah i don't like the way they feel you know and those are my biggest two complaints and a, a smaller complaint i guess would be um in order to make an adjustment you uh you, you've got to get down on your hands and knees and kind of um adjust the angle a little bit with this like i like i showed earlier in the video or reposition it a little bit on that velcro like um, system here, which isn't, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it definitely is not as, uh, user-friendly as the Axis E-Kits. So let me take this off and let me demonstrate, uh, the E-Kit and why it's better. So, like I said, I had the E-Kit disengaged, um, while I was, uh, doing the experimentation with the, um, precision kicks. So as you can see, when the beater strikes the head, the E kit doesn't actually touch the uh, trigger, you know, and that's that obviously I did that on purpose, so I would just get the triggering from that. Now, um, a little secret, you know, that us E kit users have discovered is um, you don't want to lock down the E kit itself onto the axle. You know, you want to leave it just tight enough to where it it doesn't move when you play, but when you can move it by hand like this, see? Um, so that's how you calibrate this very, very easily. So what you would do is, you know, you push the beater against the head and then you would just push down on the E-kit like that. And that's all it takes. You can do that from a sitting position. You know, you don't have to get on your hands and knees and fuck around with it like this. So that's the first thing that makes the E-kits uh, better, you know? But also, like, the E-Kits... Uh, now, you can hear a little bit of a click, you know? Just the tiniest bit. But that, you know, when you're playing live or you're recording or whatever, you cannot hear that. Like I said, I've, I've been using these for 20 years, and, you you know, I've done a lot of recording and stuff, and you would never, you would never hear that, you know? Also, since this has a torsion spring here, the feel is completely unaffected. Like, no matter how... Um, light or hard you strike the head the e -kit, you know you can't feel the e-kit whatsoever you know so um those are the main things the e-kit in my opinion is better than all of these other pedal mounted triggers also the build quality isn't great it's 3d printed using some kind of tpu um this part here that takes the impact from the footboard is aluminum but yeah it just feels cheap the other ones look cheap as well um, I just don't see this standing up over the long term, you know, with a lot of use, but, you know, there, there are plenty of people out there using these and the other similar, um, uh, designs, so, I don't know. Um, and also they're not super expensive, it was about 170 for two of these, but, um, the only exception to that is the Axis ones, those are made of aluminum and there, you know, there's no cheap plastic parts on those, but, again, they're twice as expensive so anyway they'll work for uh my purposes like i said for a backup you know 
And overall, they're pretty cool. Like, I'm definitely impressed with the performance.